وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور To all our viewers around the world, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome to this week's edition of The Straight Path. I'm your host, Fuad Muhammad. Well, tonight on The Straight Path, we are privileged to have a very special person with us, one that was born into a Christian family, all the way from Texas, America. He is now one of the biggest da'is, calling everyone actually who he meets to the word, to the truth, to al-Islam. Who's the special guy? Sheikh Yusuf Estes. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum and welcome to the show. How are you? Alhamdulillah. I'm kind of surprised to be here tonight. We've been working with Huda making these TV shows, and for you to invite me on this program tonight was kind of a surprise to me. I didn't know that. Uh, really? I, yeah. Well, actually, we have something bigger than that for you. Really? <laughs> you want to make some more shows, right? <laughs> <laughs> actually, bigger than that, Sheikh. You know, we've been working on that one called, uh, it's called Beauties of Islam. Mm -hmm. The one is called Ramadan Reminders. And then we've got the one called the, the Muslim Mailbox. But actually, Sheikh, we didn't call you here to talk about the shows. No? No. We want to know how a Christian preacher became a Muslim. Everybody asks me this story. Are you sure you want to hear this? Again, 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 and again. Again, and again. <laughs> Ever since 1991. So many people ask me this, I decided to put up a website on the internet that tells really? the story. Yeah, in the story on there, it's, uh, it's actually true. It's so true, but even now when I read it, I start crying. Because I remember how I used to be and how I am now. And I remember that, that man who helped me get to Islam. But I'm getting ahead of myself. If you want to know, I can tell you this story. It all started when my father told me that we're going to start doing business with a man who's from Egypt. Oh, really? I got excited. I said, okay, Egypt, that's the land of the pyramids and uh, the Sphinx. You know, they call him Abu Hul. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is going to be like Nile River and was that uh, the Cleopatra? Yes. I said, I could just see business cards now with those pyramids on it, camels and all this kind of... And then I said, and my father, he says, uh, and he's a Muslim. Muslim. I said, a what? He's Muslim? Oh. I was thinking... Oh, of all the things. I said, Dad, you know we can't do business with a Muslim. He said, why? I said, you know, because my father knew these TV evangelists. Maybe you heard of some of them like Jimmy Swagger yes, and, yes. and Jerry Falwell and all these different guys. And he knew them. And the things that they said about Islam, the way that they used to put down Muslims in the Quran and the horrible things that were being said. And by the way, not true, but I didn't know that. So I'm saying to my father, you know, these guys are hijackers, they're kidnappers, they don't believe in God. They worship a black box in the desert, mm. and they kiss the ground five times a day. <laughs> so my daddy's saying, no, no, you've got to meet this guy. He's really nice, we're going to do business with him. And I said, I'll meet him on one condition. He said, what is it? I said, we do it my way. He said, what's your way? I said, okay, I want to come from church. It's got to be on Sunday. And then what I'm going to do... I'm going to come to him. Well, I'm going to stop and eat or nothing. Directly to him. And I will have my cross. I used to wear a cross on my belt loop. About okay. that big. Mm. Okay? And I had a Bible that I carry under my arm all the time. 
and I have a cap on my head, and across the top of the cap it says, Jesus is Lord. Mm. And that's the way I want to meet this guy. Well, <laughs> my dad said, okay, Sunday it is. Okay. We had a store in the mall in a place called Grand Prairie, Texas. And so in the store, we would go to meet him on Sunday, you know. Now, I was ready for this guy, and I imagined, what's this guy going to look like? You know, he's going to be wearing one of those long white robes, and he's going to have a big outer garment thing, what they call a bisht over that, and he's going to have a turban on his head, and he's going to have an eyebrow that goes all the way across from one side to the other, a huge bushy beard that he'll have, and a big sword that he's going to be carrying. I think I was looking for somebody that's a cross between Attila the Hun and the Ayatollah Khomeini. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. So when my father took me in, I was nervous, you know. Here, I'm going to meet this guy. Oh, he's going to be a Muslim. Oh, boy. You know, but I'm going to hold the faith of Christianity high in front of this guy. We went in the door, you know. And my father said, here he is. I said, where? Where's the guy, you know? Mm -hmm. And he brought him over. And I said, this? Because he wasn't wearing any clothes like I was thinking. He was wearing normal, everyday clothes, like you're wearing, you know. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have even a beard. Mm. And he didn't have any hair. Actually, he's bald-headed. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and I said, this man is... And he had something Egyptians have. Not all people in the world have this thing. Oh. But Egyptians have something very special What's called that? Ibtisam. Mm. Ibtisam. Well, you know what is Ibtisam? Smiling. Smile. It's a big, beautiful smile. And I couldn't help but be caught by this smile. And when I shook hands with him, I said, this is a nice guy. I don't know why, I just felt like he's a nice guy, you know. I forgot everything about being Muslim. It just kind of went out the door just by meeting him. I, I, I like to mention this because I want Muslims to know that you need to get out and meet people more. Don't be so reserved. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid to be yourself. Yeah. Because when more people meet Muslims and know real Muslims, then they'll know that this baloney that's going on in the media is just that, a bunch of baloney. But anyway, I'll come back to this story because you asked me. Next thing, immediately after I meet him, hello, how are you? I said, do you believe in God? <laughs> Just like that. He said, well, yes. I mean, God, though. Do you believe in God? He said, yes. I said, yeah, but the God of Adam. You know about Adam? Yes. Abraham. There's a funny story about this, but I'll tell you later about okay. Abraham. There's something okay. very key about this. Okay. He said, yes. I said, Moses. Mm -hmm. He said, yes. David. Solomon. Yes. So you believe in all those? Oh, okay. You believe in the Bible? He said, yes. You believe in the Old Testament, though? Yes. But you don't believe in the New Testament? He said, yes. Too many yes. I'm gone. What? How? I said, yeah, but you don't believe in Jesus. Uh, he said, yes. I'm gone. What? That's not what we heard. I did not hear it that way. I said, yes, but you don't believe he is the Christ, the Messiah. He said, yes. I'm going, wait a minute. But you don't believe he's with God. He's going to come back in the last days. He said, yes. I said, this guy's going to be easy. I can convert this guy. Immediately, I took him out to have a cup of tea. And we sat together in a little cafe right yeah, by actually, my dad's I remember shop. reading that, under, that I was actually... Uh, why did he take him out for that cup of coffee after why? I met him? Because I was going to convert him. Hmm. That was it. I was the sit guy. right there the first day. I said, wouldn't that be something? I can convert him on the first day. Wow. I was ready. You had ambitions. <laughs> I mean, that boy, I'm going to get him now. <laughs> so I started in. I started talking about Abraham. Abraham. I'm telling him the story of Abraham and his son Ishmael, his son Ishak, you know, uh, Isaac, as we call him yes. in English. And the story of how Abraham has to sacrifice his son. And he's sitting there going, yes, that's what we believe. We believe that. I said, yes, but what about this point right here where a ram has to come in and be the salvation because there's the substitute and it's so and so and I'm going on. And he said, yes, we believe that. I was thinking, now, wait a minute. I had talked to another priest friend of mine. Okay. Uh, uh, he's not a priest, he's a preacher for the born-again Christians. And he told me, to be real careful with these Muslims. But for sure he was telling me, read this to them because they don't believe this. And he was saying he did, be he did believe it. And I was thinking, huh. So step by step I was thinking, you know, we can do this. I went back to my father. I said, Dad, I want us to do business with this guy. Oh, my father said, okay, it. great. I said, because I can convert him. And my, my father, <laughs> he's so sweet. He said, 
leave him alone. He has his religion. We have our religion. He's a nice person. Just, you don't need to convert people. I said, no, this is our mission. We have to save people to the Lord. My dad said, listen, it's up to him to save the people, okay? Subhanallah. Yeah, my dad said that. I'm thinking, no, i got to convert this guy. So Why we were start you so doing eager business. to convert him? Why? Huh? Why were you so eager to convert him? Well, uh, to be honest about the thing, you see, I was out on the streets going around doing what we call in English, uh, I mean Arabic, when we, Muslims, we say street dawah. That's what I used to do as a Christian. Mm. I would be in the streets and I would have my Bible and I would witness. They call it witnessing, you know. Yeah. I think that's a, a good comparison, witness, dawah. And I would go up to people like uh, drug dealers or prostitutes in the street, anybody. I see them, they're downtrodden, poor, they don't have a home. If I have anything, if I have some money, I will give it to them. And well, they're saying, oh, thank you, and give them some food, anything. And then at the same time, I start bringing them the message of the Bible. And I would quote to them many of the scriptures in the Bible, the good things, the things we as Muslims know, or, you know, we should do it too, you know. There's no doubt about it. These are good teachings. Very moral and upright things. And so as I was doing these things, I felt a need to call the people to Jesus. Yes. And that's what I wanted to do with this man. And I was told these Muslims are very dangerous people. They don't believe like we believe. And they're, you know, just stay away from them. And I've been warned in a number of times. By your friends. Yeah, by other preachers, actually. Preachers. Yeah. yeah. So then the next thing that happens, we start traveling together. This gentleman from Egypt. I can't remember the name of the city he's from. But anyway, uh, so as we're traveling together, working together, I watched his character and I thought, wow, every time it was time for him to do what he calls salah, mm -hmm. salah means like the connection between you and Allah, and it doesn't really mean prayer, it's bigger than that, but you know that. Anyway, so he would stop, whatever we're doing, he'd say, excuse me for a few minutes, and I would watch him, and we're doing business, we're trying to do this, here, here he goes, walk over there and you'd see him, and bowing and putting his head on the ground. And in a moment he would put his head on the ground. I'd say, look at this. This is so unbelievable. A human being, a strong man, who's willing to humble himself to put his head, his head in the dirt in front of his Lord. This is an amazing religion. If you can get a human being to humble themselves like that in front of God, like this, and fasting, not eating, not drinking during the daylight hours. This... I didn't imagine to see something like this. And then, on top of that, here is a man who had some moral teachings about him that, and, and I can't even describe it even now, but I'll give you an example and let okay. you think about this. Watch this. One day, I had two little daughters, one about this big and one a little bit bigger than that, I guess, you know. And so to the older of the two, she's about five or six, I guess, he says to her, would you like to borrow a dollar? Hmm. And I thought, borrow a dollar? What's that? You want to give a kid a dollar? Give him a dollar. What's this borrow a dollar thing? Five years old, she was. Yeah. Before. So he gave her the dollar, and I told him thank you for that. I was thinking, because in Texas we actually say, hey, can I borrow a dollar? Borrow ten dollars, borrow twenty. We don't mean we're going to ever pay it back, by the way. <laughs> That's the kind of borrowing we're talking about. A few days later, he asked her if she had any money. She had like four quarters, something like that. And uh, he said, okay, give it back. This is the dollar you owe me. And I thought, oh, how tacky was this man, you know. And I asked him, I said, what's that? He said, well, do you remember another time that I borrowed a dollar from her and I paid her back? I did remember that. Yeah, one time he asked her for a dollar and I thought that was tacky. But mm -hmm. then he gave it back and now he's asking her to pay it back. And I'm asking him, what's this about? He said, it's training the children to learn the responsibility of the value of the money and the value of your word and how you live up to what you say you're going to do. He said, and, and it was less than two days, because children's memory wouldn't last that yeah. long. But within two days, you know, he did this. And I realized that this is a huge teaching in business. And he said, and another point is, it must never be more than the original amount. Mm. Because no riba in Islam, there's no usury, no interest. I thought, wow. I said, oh, let me watch this guy a little bit more, you know. Step by step, I watched his character. And, I, and then one time we had, uh, we would go to these like uh, flea markets and things like that okay. and put out these tables with stuff. I get a lot of stuff 
that is uh, outdated merchandise. The dates on it are so close, no store would sell it because mm -hmm. it's going to expire. In the United States, it's a big deal, you know. So if the date's going to expire within two or three days, nobody would want it, you know. Mm -hmm. But you could sell it at the flea market. And it's what we had. So I have the table lined out with stuff, you know. And lady came and she started to buy some things. And he reached under the table and was giving her things from under the table. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm giving her this. I said, look, this has got four or five more days than this. Give her this stuff. He said, I can't do that. It's not my religion. I said, what? He said, this stuff here has only got one day left. Now, this stuff here has more days. I said, what? That's why we put it up there. He said, that's not for me, okay? He said, you can do it. I don't want to do that. I said, okay, do whatever you want to do, you know? Uh, he was an amazing man. And I kept thinking, you know, if we get this guy in Christianity, we're going to make him a saint right away. Mm. Maybe even so you still an wanted angel. to convert him? Huh? So you still wanted to convert him all of the way? Of course! <laughs> what part of the story are you missing here? <laughs> Hello? That's my goal. I haven't thought about anything else. So then, an, another strange thing happened. My friend, the other preacher, he used to carry this big cross. He would bolt it together. It was about 14 foot long. And he would carry that big cross and walk down the street. And when the uh, reporters, journalists, TV people would come out and ask him questions, and he'd be telling them about the Lord, and he'd give out these uh, pamphlets he had and collect donations. And so, and this was really funny because he had a heart attack. Now, it's not funny to have a heart attack, but it was what happened next. I would go visit him every day in the hospital. And while I was in the hospital with him, another man was in the room with him in a wheelchair. So I go over to this other gentleman and I start witnessing to him. And I've got a Bible under my arm and I've got my cross with me. I've got my hat. Jesus is Lord. And I'm telling this other man in the wheelchair about Jesus loves you, about the Bible. And I ask him, where are you from? He said, I'm from Venus. I'm going, Venus? Venus, <laughs> Texas? He said, no, the planet. I'm going, oh, he's crazy. I thought this was a cardiac ward. Maybe it's a nut ward, you know. It turns out, though, that he had been very depressed, very depressed. I mean, this heart attack had really hurt him, you know. And not just physically, but, you know, mentally and things, because he couldn't do what he wanted to do in life. Sure, can you stick a point there? We just want someone to meet you, actually. Can you please come? Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum salam. <laughs> this is Mr. Ahmed Fahmi, our regional yeah. director. Yeah, you're the regional director for the Nice to have you here with us, man. By the way, I got you a surprise. Yeah? Yeah. Guess. Uh, surprise. Guess uh, I don't know, some hold more on. programs? Or? Just hold on. What? One second. He's the, ma the regional uh, manager, uh, regional director of Huda. Huda, yeah. Yeah, in Cairo. Here we go. Do you know this guy? <laughs> Muhammad? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Habibi Sheikh Yusuf. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. you I can't believe it. It's a long time. How are you, man? Okay. Surprise, huh? Take your when seat. did you join to this? So he can join the show. Oh, this is, is, this, uh, is this a real show? Are we already on TV? <laughs> yes, we are. Just I got to go. Yes, but no. But continue the show. Would yeah. <laughs> you like to tell the viewers who this guy really is? Have a seat. It's been a long time. How are you? Alhamdulillah. How about you? I'm talking about you. I'm sitting here. You know that. It's been here. Have All you been time. here listening to this? No, I've been <laughs> just trying to make a surprise for you. <sighs> I know you were here. I'm surprised. In Egypt. I'm surprised. For I'm sure. Glad. I'm glad to see you in a good <laughs> health and talking about me too. Is this really, we're still broadcasting? This yes, is, we are. Okay. All of this is on camera. Because otherwise what I want to just take him and we're going to go out. And <laughs> <laughs> this is Muhammad Abdurrahman. 
This is the man I'm telling you about. This is This is the light for Islam to be. we I am so impressed of what I hear always about you. And what I watch on the TV, uh, may Allah reward you for your efforts and your strength in keeping your path like this for 17 years now. Every time I tell this, every time I tell the story and I think about you, I really I thank Allah so much that He sent somebody like this man. Why? I don't want to talk about you in front of your face. This is embarrassing. No, I hear but this man, if Allah would have sent anybody else, I would not have listened to them. Subhanallah. That Why? Why? Because you remember I was just telling about the priest and the, and the one in the wheelchair. I was just telling you the story. This man was in a wheelchair. And it turned out he was a Catholic priest. Okay. So when I was witnessing to him, he said, okay, okay, I want to confess something to you. And I said, oh, don't confess to me, I'm not a priest. I'm not even a Catholic. He said, I know that. I am a Catholic, I am a priest. Okay. And I was shocked. You remember? Yeah, I remember. Father Peter Jacobs. Peter Jacobs, yeah. I remember well, him very well, yeah. It, <laughs> when he got out of the hospital, I asked him to come and live in the house with us. And in the meantime, we brought Muhammad to live in the house with us. We had a big house out in the country. Okay. We uh, called it the ranch. ranch. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And this, you time you huh? this time you were new in America. This uh, time you were new in America. Yeah, less than one year. Less than one year. Yeah. Hmm. Sometimes he would say words. I didn't have a clue what he was saying, but he'd be smiling. I'd be going, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I guess. You know, he was still getting his English together. Oh, my God. You're Texan. <laughs> oh, and then what happened? Yeah, I, I, I'm so... Uh, I, I don't know if I can remember what we're doing even here now. This is shocking me. Okay, you met the guy in the hospital. Oh, yeah. He said he's from Venus. Yeah, well, that's what happened. After I found out he was a Catholic priest, I realized that, you know, he didn't like me coming and preaching to him as a Protestant Christian, you know. Anyway, when he came to live with us, I was telling him about this guy is a Muslim living with us. Let's convert him. He's telling me, actually, as a Catholic priest, we had to study Islam. I know about Islam. Hmm. I said, you do? He said, yes, it's a, a very important religion. And it has this and this. He's known the five points of Islam, you know, the pillars. Yes. Believing in Allah and His Messenger and performing the Salah, the, the yes. prayers, fasting Ramadan and paying yes. zakat, the charity, and also making yes. pilgrimage. He knew all about these things. So, then we would sit around the table at night. Now, here's what we do. Clear off the table after the food. And then, uh, nonchalantly, let's just discuss the Bible in front of our Muslim friend. <laughs> so, I bring out, what? The Revised Standard Version of the Bible. My father brings out the King James Version of the Bible. My wife had, uh, she had the Jimmy Swaggart's Good News right. for Modern Man. Sure. And then the Catholic priest has a totally different Bible. Because these books are all 66 books each, okay? But the Catholic version, which is much older, mm -hmm. in fact, the Christian Protestant Bible comes from the Catholic Bible. But the Catholic Bible has 73 books. What happened to the other seven books? Nobody knows. <laughs> anyway, here we are, we're talking about which book. No, my book, no. And my book says in it that the Malik James, the King James Version, is having grave defects. It needs to be retranslated. And my father said, no, this is the, no, this one, no, that one, so and so. And finally, I'm embarrassed because we're arguing in front of him. I said, okay, but just change the subject. How many versions of that Koran thing do you have? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's take the answer from him after we take this short break. Stay tuned, viewers, as we speak to Sheikh Yusuf Estes and the person who gave him Shahada, Brother Muhammad Abdul Rahman, after the break. Stay tuned. Oh Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the straight path. We're talking to Sheikh Yusuf Estes and his journey to the straight path along with the brother who gave him shahada, Brother Muhammad Abdul Rahman. Welcome again to the show, Sheikh. 
So we were talking about five of you on Brother Muhammad. Yeah, I think um, probably we should let the people know. This is live, yeah? Of course. So you have call-ins, right? Yep. Okay, well, we should probably let the people know then that uh, we're going to hold up any calls okay. until, until after we complete the story. I think it's better. What do you think? Of course. I'm not trying to tell you how to run the show, but <laughs> just, you know. So the next thing that happens, you see, after I, the Bible, Quran thing, because he says the Quran only has one version. Yep. And there we are. We're here with all these different versions of Bibles. He's saying Quran is only in Arabic anyway. You can have all the versions you want in translation, and they're not Quran. None of us would ever consider somebody gives you a Islamic ruling from a translation of Yusuf Ali. <laughs> no way. <laughs> they would never accept that, right? I agree. But if you look in the Quran and you see something clearly said, this is haram, this is halal, you know, permitted, or something is forbidden, okay, then th that's fine. So he's saying there's only one version of Quran, it's in Arabic language. And I felt like, okay, that was a dumb argument. I wish I had <laughs> never brought that one up. So the next time we're sitting around, okay, let's go this way. I have another idea. Okay. In the meantime, my preacher friend has already told me. I talked to him on the phone. I went to his house. He said, stay away from that Muslim. Stay away from them. And whatever you do, if he brings that book, that Quran book, don't touch it. Mm -hmm. Don't read it. You had any idea they were planning this? No. Well, oh. Conniving and planning is what we were doing. <laughs> How to convert this Muslim to Christian. But, you know, this is the first time I know that now. You didn't hear that. No. But you had in, uh, any part of meeting uh, Sheikh Yusuf mm -hmm. back then. Uh -huh. You had any uh, intention to convert <coughs> him as well? No, it was just a, a, a business deal. That's all. Then it turned to be what happened. But originally it was just a business deal that someone was concerned on my part. SubhanAllah. So uh, now the next thing I was thinking about, okay, let's go another route. So we clear the table after another meal on another night. This time let's talk about God. We believe in God, the real God, the God of Adam and Abraham. And he's going, yeah, yeah, just like he'd said before. And then he asked me, how do you explain Trinity? Because I said, God is one. And he yes. said, this is what we believe. He said, and that's it. We don't have anything more than that. But you have a Trinity, so how do you explain it? So I had this idea. I'm going to explain. You remember? Yeah. The apple, Tufa. Yeah. The apple has the skin on the outside. Yeah. It has the white meat inside. And inside of that are the seeds. Sure. So these three things make one apple. Three things make one God. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And then he said, how many seeds are in there? Yeah. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> so next day, I'm back over talking to my preacher friend again. I said, oh, the apple thing didn't work. He said, I told you to stay away from these Muslims. They're going to hurt you. You're going to get a demon, son. You're going to get a demon, a shaitan, you know. Yeah. So I said, no, 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 come on, man. Give me another. He said, use the babe, egg. Tell him about this. Okay, egg. So the next time I'm telling him, you know, the egg, it has the white shell. Inside the shell is the white of the, you know. And then inside of that is the yolk. Yeah. Three things, one egg. Mm. Ah, Got him here. Got him. No, he said, what if it's a double yolk? You know when it has two yellows? Yes. You see an egg do that sometime? He said, does your God become four? Yeah. Ooh. And what if it's rotten? An egg could be rotten. Mm. Then you have a... Do you want a God that can be rotten? Of course not. <laughs> yeah. And you're comparing a lot to an egg, for crying out loud. This is an unbelievable thing. And so then, then it comes the subject of comparing God to a family. Like a man is a husband and a wife and a child. The three make one family. It's the family of God. You know, well, what if you have some more kids or twins? Or what if you get a divorce? You want a God that can get a divorce? No, you don't want that. So we're going through these different stages of how to explain something. Finally... I'm about exasperated. I've tried, I tried the finger. You know the finger? Yeah. When it's one finger, but you go like this. One, two, three parts makes the... You can oh. God to your finger. <laughs> What's this? It's subhanAllah. Trying everything possible. Yeah, and then finally, the water. You've heard of the water one, right? Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. The water is like this. Oh. Water is three things. It is a liquid. It is a gas when it's a vapor, you know, when it becomes steam. And also, it's a solid when it freezes. Ah, three things... All in one. Except what? They can't be all three at the same time. 
Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so now jungles. what will you do? How will you get just... So finally, I'm going to throw it back on him. I said, well, what do you guys say about it? And what did he read? Surah Ikhlas. A'udhu billahi min shaitan al-rajim bismillahi r-Rahman rahim Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yulid wa lam yulad. Wa lam yukullahu kufu wa Subhanallah. Now, the meaning, when he explained the meaning, this is what got me. But while he was saying it, we were in the car. Yes, I and, remember. And you that. were reciting, and I told you, stop, uh, read it again, say it again. You said, why? You don't know the Arabic. I said, no, something is beautiful. I don't know what you said. You started said. crying. You don't know Arabic. I remember that. Many oh, times oh, I saw oh. other people like me oh. who they hear the Arabic in the Quran. They don't know Arabic, but they start to cry because it's Allah's speech. Oh, Lord. And when the heart, the heart is real and sincere, it recognizes Allah's speech. Subhanallah. It does. The heart does, yeah. It's not a joke. Now, if somebody's a non-believer, won't believe that anyway, so who cares? But if somebody believes, um, they will recognize this Quran, this speech of Allah. And I'll come back to this. So now, I'm perplexed. I'm stressed out over this thing. I can't convert this guy. In the meantime, he brings a Quran. Hmm. That big, remember the big Yusuf Ali translation? I'll link the mosque, yes, sir. You got it from, from the mosque. mosque. I'll link the mosque, yeah. Yeah, and he yeah. brought it and he set it on top of the counter in my dad's store. It was set up there. And I'd look at it and he said, do you want... I said, no, that's okay, that's okay, you know. And when he wasn't looking, you see, I went over and I looked at it. And I remember my friend's warning, don't read that book. That's so right. I said this little prayer in my heart before yeah. I touched it. <laughs> oh, God, protect me from any evil while I read this book. Now, any Muslim knows that that's exactly what we always say anytime we go to the Quran. Every Muslim does that. A'udhu billahi min shaitani rajim I seek refuge with Allah from the cursed devil. And then we begin to read the book. Exactly. I didn't even know I was doing the right thing. I opened it up. And what I read? Surah Fatiha. Subhanallah. Anybody that knows Surah Fatiha? Mm -hmm. They know how beautiful it is. It said, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Rahim Maliki Yom Deen. Iyakana Budu wa Iyakana Steen, Ehdina Saratu Mustaqeen, Saratu Ladina and Amta Alehim, Ghayur Maldubi Alehim, Waradalim. And this man sitting right here is the one who taught me how to recite that. I remember the first day. I remember the first day when you said, Would you like to learn how to do this? And you were teaching us, Bismi, Bismi, Bismi. And we were saying, Bazmi? No, no, Bismi. Bozmi? No, Bismi, Bismi. Bismillah. Bismiwa? Bismillah. Bismillah. And finally we got Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I said, "Wow, oh. that's good." He said, "No, that's just the first part." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they said Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Yeah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. It took us like two days to get that. Wow. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. We but we were so excited. Like hundreds about it. of times until in Arabic and he's a, a Texan, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> Arabic <laughs> accent. Don't, don't mess with Texas. <laughs> no, no, I'm not messing with it. <laughs> Because I am one of them, so I can mix with them. Mess with them. The next thing that happens, though, the Catholic priest, he asked Muhammad, can I go to your church, meaning the masjid? He went with you. You remember that? Yeah. And they were having all this business going on and so-and-so in the mosque at that time. So... The Muslims are the biggest enemy to Islam in America. But that's another story. Very tough period, yeah. Yeah. So... But when you brought Peter back, uh, Father Peter Jacobs, when he came back to the house, do you know what we did? My wife and I took him aside and we said, what did they do in there? Did they like slaughter any animals? Did they make any bombs? What were they doing? He said, no, they came and they stood and they were bowing, prostrating on the ground, sitting, and then they left. I said, that's it? He said, that's it. Salat al-Subah. They just came and prayed. And prayed. That was it. But so I said, hmm. And all this time you had no idea? No, no I, that they are doing something in my, you know, behind me. <laughs> but, uh, but, but in the same time I started feeling motivated to explain Islam to these guys. Mm. They had so many questions. Okay. So that meant something to me. Okay, so you're, you're starting now. It's not just a business deal I now. Give it more, no, no, it's not only a business, just business anymore. Mm -hmm. It became just something else together with the business. What, 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 what was the point? 
<coughs> changing that intention that you really wanted to tell them about this now? Well, every time we want to just close that file of religious debates and comparisons and all this stuff, which sometimes never ends and might create problems and difficulties and hardships, even amongst the good people if they are ignorant. But I notice that these people are not ignorant. They have a lot of knowledge in the area of religions. Mm -hmm. So actually it became a matter of the picture of Islam in their eyes. They're talking so much about it. And then I had to just start getting them the right picture. And then just become clear. MashaAllah, you did an conscious. excellent job. Allah is a shit. So, uh, and she, okay, go ahead, sir. Oh, well, I was just thinking that when we took the priest aside and we were asking, what do they do, what do they do? And he was telling me, nothing, they just prayed. And I said, what kind of music did they have? And he yeah. said, they didn't have any music. I said, like, remember, I'm a music minister. That's yes. my job in the church. I said, how can you worship God without music? <laughs> <laughs> so, I didn't know anything about Islam. Really, I didn't. I thought I knew something. I didn't know anything. But then, you know, we started all thinking and asking. As he said, we asked a lot of questions. And we, yeah. were, we weren't trying to debate anymore. We were just we trying were to learn. What does Islam say about this? What does market. it say about a man and a woman's relationships? What does it say about fathers and sons and you daughters? adoption. Once they said that they had an adoption story. And so many things. Mm. But then the Catholic priest asked you again to go the next week. Right. Yeah. This time they didn't come home until very late at night. And when they came home, yeah. here the priest, he got out of the car. You got out. I recognized you right away. He but knows. who is this guy with you? Because he was wearing a long white dress. He had a pillbox cap on his head. I said, yeah, what did you do? Did you become a Muslim? Yeah, and he said, a illallah, Rasulullah. So look at this. A Catholic priest becomes a Muslim. Mm. Now here I am telling my wife about this at night. I'm saying, we were Professional just about to go priest, to bed. Yeah. I was all excited. I was, yeah. you know, and I'm telling her, look, this Catholic priest became a Muslim. What are you thinking about Allah, the Quran, so and so? She said, I want a divorce. Huh. I said, huh? She said, I want a divorce. I said, why? She said, a Muslim can't be married to a Christian. I want a divorce. I said, wait a minute. Whoa, I didn't say I want to be a Muslim. I will never be a Muslim. No, 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 no. Don't worry about a divorce. I don't know. Besides, Muhammad told us a Muslim woman can't be married to a Christian man. <laughs> but if I became a Muslim, we could still be married. It's the Muslim woman that can't be married to the Christian man. Mm -hmm. She said, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I want to be a Muslim. I said, what? I wasn't ready for that. And then I said, well, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, there's good news here. Because I really did like Islam. I didn't know how to tell anybody. I wanted to say that. I couldn't. So I said, okay, I too wish to be a Muslim. That's the good news. I'll be a Muslim too. She said, I don't believe you. I said, no, I'm telling the truth. She said, no, you're a liar. I said, I'm not lying. I'm telling the truth. She said, you're either a liar right now or you were a liar five minutes ago when you said you didn't want to be a Muslim. Either way, you're a liar. I was shocked. I said, what am I going to do? So I went downstairs. Actually, she was throwing me out of the house. And I was thinking, how did she throw me out of my father's house? I went down and I woke you up. Well, she was throwing you out of the house? She was, yeah. Wow. <laughs> And I went down and got you. That's when we walked around that night. Yes. Walked all of those back roads. I all through the, Middle Othian. You remember? Yeah, the Until you. the sun started coming up. And I'm asking him a million questions. Mm -hmm. And finally he said it like this. He said, it was a beautiful thing he said. Allah it's Allah. not between you and me anymore. Subhan it's not between you and your father. My father was a minister, by the way. Allah. He said, it's not between you and your wife. This is between you and your Lord. You need to go talk to him. And he let me go. And he went off to pray Fajr. And I went off and I put my head on the ground in the same direction I'd seen him do that. And I said, let me do what he did. And with my head on the ground, so I said these words, Oh God, guide me. Oh. And when I lifted up my head, I knew I needed to be a Muslim. I went in the house. I went upstairs. I made a shower. I came down and in front of this man right here yeah. and that Catholic priest, oh. I made my shahada. I said, a shadu. And la ilaha illallah. A shadow on Muhammad Rasulullah. A few minutes later, my wife comes down with hijab on her, and she did the same thing. 
Subhanallah. She made her, and a few, what was it, a couple months later, yeah. my dad accepted Islam. Yeah. Okay. And before she died, my stepmother accepted Islam. And my children grew up as Muslims. So Allah this Allah one man Allah. right here, wallah, may Allah accept it from Allah. Allah, Allah, Allah accept from Allah. you. Okay, this I have a question for you. Brother. Brother. Yes, brother. For all of Actually, the telephone was going crazy, so we have to take some calls now. We have Brother Mahmoud from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Mahmoud. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakum Allah khair. All chiefs, the Sheikh Yusuf, Sheikh Muhammad, jazakum Allah khair. I'll be quick as possible to to let people the chance. I have I have I want something that I want your opinion about. I have someone who is Catholic from Memphis, USA. I just had a small story with him. He just asked me once on the internet. He asked me if I'm a Muslim, and I said yes. He said he asked me a strange question. He asked when you take over the world. Uh, can can I still be Christian and pay jizya? And uh, I told him, why do you say that? Because uh, he said, uh, because uh, I know you, uh, this is the fastest grown religion and uh, you all going to take over the world. Uh, so I, I keep uh, back with this guy and I showed him a few of your material uh, in your website about Islam being uh, the same message uh, Jesus had. And he finally admitted that Jesus is the prophet and that Allah is one, alhamdulillah. Uh, but when I talk to him about Islam, he hesitates and they uh, say that uh, he needs more time. And it's over a month now. Uh, I don't know what uh, what next step uh, to do with, okay. with him. And okay. So if you may give okay, got the point, uh, Brother Mahmoud. That yeah. was Brother Mahmoud from Egypt. Uh, just before we take his question, when he and his wife took Shahada in front of you, mm. what was that feeling like? I, I was uh, expecting it. You were? It came gradually. Ah. In every day sunrise. Subhanallah. Whenever I will pray, uh, well, finish the prayer, look at their faces changing, looking at uh, many questions about why do you go towards Mecca? What? You know, as if a business of a person wants to get involved, just asking about the details. I'm saying that for the first time. Uh, in front of you, but that I had my own feelings uh, as well. I didn't and know that. My impressions, yes, I'm saying that for the first time. But I noticed for a period of time before you you take Shahada mm. that that thing was going to happen. You did? You yes, noticed? sir. One time Increasing I caught this daily man business. Yeah. in the night. I caught him in the night and I, I saw him praying, so I asked him the next day because uh, I came downstairs for something. Mm -hmm. So the next day I asked him, I said, I thought you guys only pray five times a day. He said, yeah. I said, okay, but you were praying in the middle of the night. He, this man, I'm sorry to expose this to the people. The sorry. The but the he's the doing the Qiyam al yeah. And then later I find that this is how, you, if you want to see, I'm going to give the advice to our brother who I just asked, Mahmoud just asked the question. Mm -hmm. And the answer is, if you really want to see people enter Islam, you sacrifice to Allah by what? Give da'wah in the day, but give du'a in the night. So Get Allah. up and cry to Allah. Oh, Allah, guide these people. Oh, Allah, these, guide these people. Allah, you're the only one that guides. Guide them. And Wallah, this man, Wallah, Allah. I love you so much. Okay, we have another telephone call, Sheikh. Brother Fasir from KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Hassan. Wa alaikum salam. Sheikh, from the time you have become a Muslim, and till now, you have been doing dawah and converting people to Islam. Allah so, I want to know, how do you change the radical image of Islam that the Americans have in their mind? Can you please clarify that for me? Mm. And uh, I've always watched lectures on, uh, in India that you delivered on Peace TV. Ah, uh, she's going to try to advertise another TV show on our show. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Huda <laughs> TV, <laughs> Peace TV. Okay, okay, good news is, by the way, we all love each other and we're all working for the same God. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Yeah, so she was asking, how do you see the Muslims in America? <laughs> well, I think it's only fair to ask, finish Mahmoud's answer about the Catholic person who's with him. First of all, <coughs> you said he's been for a month. This man was patient with me for more than three months. Yeah. But look at the reward he gets. He gets a whole entire family yeah, and yeah, all of yeah, us yeah. giving dawah. Who knows how many thousands of people entered Islam and all waiting for you on the Day of Judgment. Barakallah. So, alhamdulillah. I think so we have patient. another telephone call. Go ahead. Yes. Yes, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. 
yes, uh, I, I'd like to uh, add uh, some uh, points here. Go ahead. I think we just lost that caller. I think so. SubhanAllah. Well, you know what a lot of people do ask is, how do you feel after you get to Islam? Yeah. So maybe he was going to ask that question. And one of the things I will tell you is that when you come into Islam, everything is new, it's strange to you, and you're trying to adjust, you're trying to work your way around. That's another thing that Muhammad was aware of, and he was trying to help us adjust slowly, take it step by step, and learn the... As I was saying, he's teaching us slowly how to say the Fatiha, slowly sure. about hijab, slowly about things. Take it as you can. And he never told us, you have to do this, you can't do that. Uh, circumcision is a subject that comes up. He mm. didn't go into any of these subjects. Just uh -huh. take it slowly and understand what is, what do you call it? Aqidah. Yes. The correct belief in Islam. Okay, we have uh, Ihsan from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. Hello. Hello? Wa alaikum salam. Hello. You are, you are our, you are our, you are our teacher, man. Yeah, the problem is he's got his... Uh, I think, can you please uh, lower the volume on your TV set? Yeah, when you guys call him, be sure, and, and you have to uh, turn off the volume of your set. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Allah Azawajal has made you, inshallah, 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 a very rich person on the Day of Judgment, inshallah. Jazakallah <laughs> alf khair. And Brother Yusuf says, Allahu Akbar, may Allah increase the number of Brother Yusuf says in all over the world. Allahumma Amin. Exactly. Amin. Of, I mean, when you were in uh, Daman, Brother Yusuf says, last two weeks before, we, I had the chance to listen to your talk. The reality of Islam. Subhanallah. Allah bless you, Brother. Allah increase your capabilities. Allah increase your capabilities. Allah okay. increase your capabilities. Tremendously. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa barik wa sallim. Amin. Okay. 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 Over. Jazakallah khair, brother Ihsan there from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We're in the last minute of the show. Qu quickly, uh, brother so Muhammad, yes, how do you feel seeing Sheikh Yusuf Estes as he is after so many years? Well, I, I feel so much fortunate to have that thing happening to me uh, like this and to that scale. I, uh, of course, I was so happy when he embraced Islam with the family. That's, nobody can deny that. It's of very course. good. But what I never expected is that he would go through all this boom in Dawah. So, I didn't say that to him before, sorry uh, for saying that. But, but he did. Uh, uh, I was, of course, watching and tracing. We were in touch. After he became a Muslim, I moved to Houston, Texas from our area, Dallas, and then we uh, split, yeah. but by phone and all this stuff, okay. we were, but it, now he went beyond what I thought he would, to be honest with you, okay. I hear his news and wherever he goes and the number of people, and so okay. I, 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 I see him like a rizq for me. SubhanAllah, <laughs> my director is telling me that I'm out of time. Jazakallah khair for being with us. Maybe we'll do some more show for you. Of course, inshallah. Maybe next week. Okay, I'll tell you what, let's do that. We can, are you busy next week? We can. Go. Oh, what day? Uh, well, I'll be more than glad to. Work. Perfect. Okay. Jazakallah khair. Okay. Thank you very Great much, Shaykh Yusuf Estes. Shukran. Thank you very much, Brother Abdul Rahman. Allah 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 for the viewers, Allah that Allah. is Straight Path for this week. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the show. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. After those long dark nights, now my world is bright, Islam is my sight, now I found the light, after those long dark nights, now my world is bright, Islam is my sight, now Islam is my sight